Hello everybody, this is Di Antinatalis with a, just a quick video. Um, this is Red Rock Canyon, I'm outside of Denver, and um, I just love the West. I just love the colors of the West and it's gorgeous like um, Red Rock. This is the color of like the rocks, um, the boulders. And, um, you know, I just want to, I just thought of a quick video today, a video idea. And, um, um, the, it's about the imposition of life, but it's also that, um, when you bring somebody into existence, you are obligating them to do a myriad of things on a, on a daily basis. And like I was getting ready today and I had like so many things to, um, um, you know, just in order to get out the door, like so many hygienic issues and, you know, I had to hydrate myself. I had to eat, you know, brush teeth, um, get ready and then put the, the towels out, you know, at the hotel and put the shoes on and, and find everything. And just, I mean, it just took hours for me to get ready this morning. So, you know, when you bring somebody into existence, you, um, obligate them to, have to muster their way through life and um and that's before even they get to a painful stage or you know if they get heart disease kidney disease cancer diabetes lupus crohn's disease um speaking of crohn's disease i saw the most awful fissures from crohn's patients that i never even knew existed i never knew crohn's i knew crohn's was bad but i didn't know it was that bad but um when a parent, a biological parent, um, brings their children into existence, they are obligating them to um, a, a myriad of chores, daily chores, um, whether it's work, um, you know, hygienic um, issues, whether it's medical issues. I mean, maybe they have you know, an insulin pump, or maybe they have to take a, a, a daily shot, or maybe they, you know, were born without a limb and they have to put on a prosthetic. So there are many reasons why, uh, you know, people have um, complications in their lives that um, create um, complications for them getting ready in the morning to just get out the door, to go to work, or just to even, you know, function or even exist or live or to live without pain um, and discomfort. So, um, antinatalism prevents, you know, all sorts of pain and chores and discomforts and frustrations and, um, and issues um, by promoting um, the ceasing of reproduction and procreation. And um, nobody, nobody signed up for, for, for this, you know, for this life. And um, we are, we're simply obligated once we are placed into existence. And um, antinatalism is not about killing ourselves. It's not about suicidality. And um, I mean, it's about preventing harm. And the only way you can prevent harm is by um, not procreating and to, um, volunteer, voluntarily, um, uh, you know, extinguish, um, the promotion of life. And, um, nobody wants to be obligated to something that they didn't commit to. Um, I mean, it's like if, if somebody went out and bought me a horse, like, you know, as much as I love horses, I, um, have no, I'm not equipped to take care of a horse and nobody is equipped in their in their lives to um, take care of all the dilemmas that face us um, from the time we're 20 to the time we're 40 and then 60 and then 70 and 80 we're not equipped to handle all of the dilemmas and repercussions of existence and um, you know, there's just so many things that can come our way and um, um, so many pitfalls and um, medical crises. But um, so, you know, the, the only thing to do is uh, to not procreate. And the second thing, the second best thing is to teach and educate others and announce um, the 
uh, announced the, the philosophy of antinatalism and that it is a choice um, to not procreate and that it is not a given that we have children, biological children, and it should never be um, forced upon women or um, pushed upon women to bear offspring. Um, so I'm just gonna pan around this beautiful scenery here. And again, I don't know if I mentioned, this is um, the Red Rock Canyon area outside of Denver. And so I just love the colors of the West. And uh, so please do not reproduce.